So somebody want to get Y by itself or give a solution? How are we going to start? Yeah. A solution? Sure. Um, 2 and negative 15. 2 and negative 15. So how did you do that? How did you find that solution? For x and for y, and just hope that it works out. Oh, no, for x, and then oh. I have to see what y is. All right, well, that's really different, right? Yeah. Because we're not making wild guesses about both numbers. We're just saying this will be x, and then I'll figure out y. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if this works out. 2 times 2 squared plus 5 times 2 plus y equals 3. So I'm going to do some math, and then I'm going to solve for y. Um, something that's really important here is to remember that this exponent is only for that 2 right there. It's not for the whole thing. Okay, So let's not multiply these together first and then square. So let's multiply this by itself, and then multiply by 2. Okay. So 2 times 2 is 4, this is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8, plus 10. Y is 3, this is 18, plus Y is 3, subtract 18, and Y is 15. You're right about that. Okay. Now, if we keep doing this, we keep plugging in numbers for X, we can put in 2, 3, 4, negative, whatever we want to do. We can put anything we want in for X. Um, and then we can solve for y. But just try to imagine that you're doing that. You put 3 in here, and you get 9 times 2, you get 18, and uh, this is uh, 15, and we add them together. And then we're always going to subtract this number, whatever it is, from both sides to figure out what y is. I not quite sure that that was a negative. See what I'm saying there? You're always going to be getting y by itself. Uh, you're going to be solving for y. You're always going to subtract whatever that number is, or if it's negative, you'll add it to both sides. Okay? So that's why we get y by itself before we even start, so that when we get done with all the plugging in and, and computing, then y will already be by itself. It'll just be, well, I've already found what it is. Okay? So that's the idea of the, uh, behind getting y by itself uh, before we go and find solutions because it just makes it much easier to find solutions. Who wants to walk us through getting y by itself? Lily? Um, could you subtract y? You can subtract y from both sides. 2x squared plus 5x equals 3 minus y. And then, like, subtract 3? Subtract 3 from both sides. 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 equals negative y. Do you do anything else? Yeah, we like the y to be positive, so we can divide by negative 1. So now, I'll put y on the left side here. y is positive, we'll divide everything by a negative 1. So we'll get 3, positive 3, minus 5x, minus 2x squared. Alright, am I good? Is that what you did? Alright. Uh, so yeah, that's correct. And we could, we could do it that way, we could also, um, like y to stay on this side because it's already positive, then we could subtract 5x from both sides, subtract 2x squared from both sides, and we get the exact same thing, 3 minus 5x minus 2x squared. Um, something interesting came up in uh, the previous class, the fifth period class. Um, so let me ask a question, because uh, I was really I was interested to find this out. I'm going to take a poll. Uh, which so who thinks that uh, this equation and this equation have uh, the same solutions? That this equation will have the same solutions as this equation? Who thinks it will have the same equation, or same solutions? The same x and y, same x's and y work in the equation. Right? If 2 negative 15 works here, 2 negative 15 are working. Okay. Who thinks that's not true? Who thinks that this equation has different solutions from this equation? Nobody thinks so? Anybody on the fence? On the fence? Okay, we're on the fence. Uh, 
Okay, well, the short answer is the first group is correct. These two equations will have the exact same solutions. Okay? If you're not sure, you can just plug in a bunch of uh, x's, whatever x's you want in here, uh, get the, the correct y's, and then see do you get the same y's when you plug in the same x's here. And if they, if, well, as long as you're doing your math correct, they will have exactly the same solutions. It doesn't matter which one you use. They're the same function. They'll turn the same inputs into the same outputs. They'll both turn 2 into negative 15. They'll both turn, now let's see what, uh, what this function turns 1 into. And then we'll see that this does the same thing. So we'll use the green one. Uh, 2 times 1 squared plus 5 times 1 plus y equals 3. That's 2 plus 5 plus 3. So y, we're going to subtract 7 on both sides, so y equals negative 4. Okay. Remember that if you only square the 1 here, you don't square the 2, so you don't get 2 squared is 4 here. You just get 1 squared times 2 is 2. Okay? So y is negative 4. Let's see what happens in this other one. It's a blue one. y equals 3 minus 5 times 1. Uh, minus 2 times 1 squared. See, notice what's happening. We've already subtracted these from both sides, in a sense. And so we get 3 minus 5, just like you have 3 minus 5 here, minus 2. So the same as we subtract 5 and subtract 2 from both sides, or subtract 7 from both sides, we're doing the same thing here. We're taking 3 minus 5 minus 2. So this function does the same thing. It takes 3 and subtracts 5 and subtracts 2 and gives us negative 4. So either way, we get the exact same solution. And then all of this happens. These are the exact same function. They do the same thing. Um, and it's kind of like having a car that's green and then taking that car and painting it blue. Does that change what the car is and what the car does? The car is exactly the same. It drives just as fast. It gets there in exactly the same way. It can drive in the same conditions. It's as good or as bad as it was to start with. It just looks different. Um, and that's exactly the case here. It just looks different, but it does the same thing. Right. Can I get um, another solution? Three negative three. I'm going to go ahead and use this. Why would you use this one instead of this one? They get the same solution, so I would use this one instead of that to find a solution. Do y by itself, I mean, that's a whole lot easier. You just put in whatever for x, do the math, and then y is the number that you got. y equals 3 minus 5 times 3 minus 2 times 3 squared. Let's see if we can come out with negative 3. 3 minus 15. 3 squared is 9. 2 times 9 is 18. So, yeah, negative 30. You do 3 minus 18, you get negative 15, and negative 15, and negative 15, negative 30. So, yeah, and if you plug it into the green one, you'll find exactly the same thing. The exact same solution. Um, so, we now have a function. It's the same as this function. Only y is by itself, so y is easier to figure out. That's the, the basically why we would get y by itself. Um, so let's talk about this, this for a second. What what does this function do? What does this function do? Turns an input into an output. Some specific examples of this. It turns 2 into negative 15, it turns 1 into negative 4, it turns third, 3 into negative 3. What do we call these things? Call them solutions because this, this x and this y go into the equation and make the equation true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, as mathematicians, we like, are interested in all of these solutions. How many solutions are there? Possible an infinite number of solutions that are possible. Um, and so that we want to, now we want to keep track of these solutions and uh, we have kept track of how many solutions so far? 
watch. So far. Oh. We kept track of three so far for this for this function. How? Okay, so we can find an infinite number. Um, how do we keep track of these three solutions? How have we written it down? Is it yeah. a graph? Function table, that's not too much different. These are what you call ordered pairs, right? If you've already emailed me, you can go ahead and put away your phone or your iPod or whatever. Um, so we can keep track of them in ordered pairs. We can keep track of them in a function table. Two gives me negative 15, one is turned into negative 4, three is turned into negative 30. Or, Stephen, what did you say was another way we could keep track of these solutions? First thing you said? A graph. A graph. A monograph. So, we like graphs. Graphs are a way of keeping track of solutions, but these solutions only take up as much space as a little dot. And where that dot is tells us what the solution is. Can we put those away? What we should have right now is our notes, we should have them out, writing things down. Like if you didn't realize that these two functions were exactly the same, you were writing down your notes and you found that out, you could say, oh wow, these, these functions, when I get y by itself, it's the same thing. It just looks a little different. Right? Call your attention to that because you're going to want to remember something like that. Keep good notes. Draw your, draw your own attention to things that are new or have been clarified. So if we want to graph these solutions, uh, this is our x, this is our y. x is horizontal, y is vertical. So x is 2 and y is negative 15. Three negative thirty is uh, too far down there to graph, but there's a point down there at uh, three negative thirty. Um, well, we should find a few more solutions before we start thinking about what this graph looks like. Find some more solutions. So, how about um, how about if we put in zero? If we use this function right here, and we put in zero, what will be the output? negative 2, put it into the function to see what the output is. Remember the order of operations, <coughs> make sure that you only square the number that you put in for x. Make sure that when you square that, number, you square that number. 